Colorado Springs number one car show by default. This is Automotive ADHD. And you are listening to Automotive ADHD. I'm your host, Matt West. And my next guest is a race car driver. He is the founder of the Just Hands Foundation, and he's a C6 quadriplegic. Now, before we talk to him, he had a great opportunity to teach NASCAR driver Joey Logano how to drive a race car without the use of his feet, just his hands. And he also was a part of a film done by Pennzoil about this very thing. So I'm going to roll a quick clip from that before we talk to my guest. Go ahead and give this a listen. Two-time NASCAR Cup Series champion Joey Logano has been behind the wheels since he was 10. Joey Logano just punched his ticket. But what if he had to compete using only his hands? Need a hand? Introducing Torsten Gross, pioneering race car driver and founder of the Just Hands Foundation. Basically, Torsten's a bad <laughs> changing how people drive. Today, he's going to show Joey how he competes using only his hands. All right, so show me how you drive this thing. You got hand controls, you got a whole bunch of different things I haven't seen before. Pay attention now. This is the part where Torsten shows off the amazing setup that helps more people get behind the wheel. This is my tri-pen. It allows me to control the steering wheel without much grip. These are my Vigel Classic 2 hand controls. Turn for gas, push for brake. And this is Pennzoil. It maximizes engine protection. Torsten Gross, my guest. Welcome to Automotive ADHD. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit real quick about your background. Um, now, you are, I said, you're C6 quadriplegic. Tell me a little bit first, though, about your background and maybe how things are now. Tell me about that. Yeah. So, I'm, uh, you know, by trade, I'm an ad guy, marketing guy, which, uh, you know, I do fractional CMO work, chief marketing officer work. And uh, I do that. But I also do public speaking and I have a charity called Just Hands all alongside, uh, well, being a, let's say, a budding race car driver. Okay. And what, and now, I, it, it's always a thing I like to ask folks, but what got you into racing? Because, you know, not everyone's into racing. There's there's a few of us, but definitely not everybody. My wife knew that, and she got me a track day at Lime Rock Park, which is arguably the most uh, strategic racetrack in the country here in uh, in upstate Connecticut. And, um, you know, I'd never thought about, we, we moved up here after COVID and I never thought about race car driving because, you know, you know, the saying, if you can't see it, you can't be it. Well, I, I never really saw mm -hmm. people in chairs, uh, racing or even tracking, right. Just, just getting on, uh, on the track and, and enjoying that time. And so it never really crossed my mind, but she just got it for me. And, uh, yeah, that was the day the addiction started. Yeah, see, that's one of those things you definitely can't quit, right? <laughs> There's no quitting slowly either with racing. It's something you're you kind of got it in your blood, and whether or not you know it, I think it's it's definitely there. And uh, yeah, so so tell me a little bit too um, about your background specifically when it comes to um, uh, when, when it comes to being a, a quadriplegic, right? Where was this sure. some way you were? Uh, was it was it born this way or did you have something happen? Tell me a little bit about that. And I'm trying to ask that in a way that's not no. sounding bad, but I, I'm just curious. I'd like to know. Look, I, I'm personally somebody who thinks uh, one should always ask because mm -hmm. making assumptions is is more dangerous than than asking. Right. And so uh, so I appreciate you asking. When I was 15, I dove in the ocean, broke my neck, 36 pieces and was what they call clinically dead for two and a half minutes. Um which, you know, I, I often get the, the, the sideways head tilt, the awe uh, moment, the oh my God moment. Mm -hmm. And I'll say it was one of the best things that could have happened to me. You know, it's life is still really good. And uh, I think it's while it seems like such a big thing, and it, and it really was right at the time, um, you know, you, you manage life in, in whatever way you need to manage it. Right. And, uh, and, it doesn't really matter what it is, whether or not it's quadriplegia or um, 
or depression or ADHD or whatever it is, right? Tourette's, uh, everybody's got their thing and mine happens to be being a quad. Um, and so, yeah, for this will be my 30 year anniversary coming up in July. Wow. And what I think is really special is, I mean, how you, you're taking this too and, you know, you're, you're developing stuff that, I mean, uh, you know, a lot of people, lots of, you know, quads and people across the world might be able to say, hey, he's doing that, right? And that's something yeah. I can do, right? Because maybe they're not thinking, maybe they're not in that mindset that you have, which is, you know, if I can see it, I can do it, right? And, and you know, yeah. maybe you're, with what you're doing, you're able to kind of pull them into that mindset a little bit too. So um, now tell me a little bit um, about some of the modifications that are made so that you can drive a car. And again, drive a car, I mean, fast. I mean, you're ripping around the track. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, so there are a couple of different modifications. One is uh, what I what, what's called a tri pin, and for somebody that has very little grip in their hands, uh, basically it clamps onto the wrist, and then you've got something under your fingers, and that allows you to steer uh, for, from a steering perspective. But paraplegics would have a knob, right? And so mm -hmm. that's what you would know of as a suicide knob. Um, it makes it easier to steer with one hand, so that you're not using your palm um, because you want grip at all times especially when you're going at speed. The second thing is, uh, is are the hand controls. So I use what's called Weigel Classic 2 hand controls. They are everyday street hand controls. Um, they are turn for gas and push for brake. Now, like in all track cars, everybody has their perspective on what they think is works the best and what's great. And I say that because there are different variations of hand control driving. There are there's left hand brake throttle. Mm -hmm. There's right hand brake throttle. And then there's these rings that go on steering wheel that, that uh, work as well. I, I could get into an hour long discussion as to why I think the ones I use are, are the best. And I'm sure other people that are listening that are in chairs might say, well, mine are even better than that. Um, and that's fine, right? Whatever it is that you use works for you. And then the last thing uh, is Velcro on the ground and that is because uh if our legs don't have muscle tone and movement we don't want our legs flapping around it's just like an able-bodied driver you want to be one with the car right and so that means that we tape down our legs um i'll go one step further and say that we have uh you know for us six-point harness and racing seats are just as if not even more important because people without back muscles or very limited back muscles, you don't want to be worried about keeping yourself balanced, right? While you're, while you're going through turns, mm -hmm. you don't want that for able-bodied people either, but you guys can use your feet, right? And your legs to, to stabilize yourself a little bit. We can't. So uh, having a really good race seat and really good harnesses is paramount. Well, and that's, I think, one thing, especially, you know, folks probably don't think of when they when they think of modifying a car um, in, in such a way, because, yeah, you're right. If you and we don't even think about it. Right. You know, if we're supporting ourselves in our seat, you know, you're using a lot of your core, you're using a lot of these different muscles that on a daily basis, no one even thinks about the fact that we're even using them. So that 100%. that makes uh, tremendous sense there. Um, and I assume, obviously, the different modifications are like you said, everyone's kind of got a little different way of doing it, probably because. Not everyone's the same. Maybe someone's got a little more grip strength. Maybe someone's got a little more movement here, right? Is that true? Yeah, and it's it's how we learned. Mm -hmm. So in Europe, 99% of drivers drive with their right hand brake throttle. Here, 95% of the drivers drive with their left hand brake throttle. Okay. And uh, so, so there's... Uh, I, I'll, I won't go into the whole detail, but I can say everyone that goes through our program that then tries the right hand controls moves over to them. But uh, weirdly enough, we, we don't teach right hand controls here in this country. And so uh, that is something that we're you know slowly starting to change. And we're also coming out with hand controls very shortly that allow you to shift with your fingers. Okay. And that's going to be a major game changer. Wow. Big. All right. So I want to we're going to come up here on a break, but I want to ask you a little bit about that. I want to ask you also a little bit specifically 
about teaching Joey Logano to use the hand controls too. Um, you know, and I'm sure a guy like him, he jumped in there and he's like, let's do it. Let's learn it. Let's, uh, let's do some really cool stuff with this. So I want to ask you, I want to ask you about all of these things and more. Torsten, uh, hang with me here through the break. Again, my guest is Torsten Gross. We are talking about modifying cars so that people with reduced mobility can drive them and importantly, drive them fast and have fun. You're listening to Automotive ADHD. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back after the break. The news and events that matter to you. AM 1460 and FM 101.1. The answer. And continuing here on the Automotive ADHD Show, Matt West here, hanging out with you, talking cars with a very special guest, Torsten Gross. He is a C6 quadriplegic who is doing some really amazing work in the field of converting race cars so that people with reduced mobility can drive them. And of course, this month, by the way, is reduced or rather uh, National Mobility Awareness Month. Now, Torsten had an amazing opportunity to drive with Joey Logano and retrofit one of the cars so that Joey could learn what it's like to drive a car that's been modified this way. And this is really cool. Now, there is a video, by the way, um, done by Penswell, and uh, we're going to link that on the Facebook page, facebook.com slash automotive ADHD. Now, Torsten, welcome back to the Automotive ADHD show. Thank you very much. Awesome. So I want to talk a little bit here um, about the car in particular that um, that Joey drove. So it's a Mustang Dark Horse, but it's not it's not stock. <laughs> let's let's get that out of the way first. It's definitely not stock. And it's very uh, we were talking in the previous segment about some of the hand controls and how some of that stuff works. But tell me about this specific setup. Yeah, so this was exactly what I said. It's the it's the right hand controls turn for gas, push for brake. And uh, he had a steering knob on on the left hand side. Um, look, I put him through what what other people had to go through as well. Even though he can use his legs, I made him tape his legs down to the side of the car. Uh, I made him cross his legs so that he couldn't use it. Uh, use them. Um, I treated him like just a, uh, another driver that that I normally put through a program uh, on our end. And uh, he, the difference is, is that he's never driven with hand controls before. Um, but he caught on really quickly. That is amazing. And, and well, and of course, you know, I think, you know, a guy like him, I think, is probably willing to jump into a challenge there. You know, I mean, for, you know, for I think any of us driving on the road, a lot of us probably can't relate to using hand controls. But even then, when you're talking about, you know, using your hand to do throttle and stuff, if folks have ridden an ATV, for example, with a, you know, hand throttle like that, you know, they might be able to to uh, kind of start at least to see the seeds of what that's like a little bit. Now, um, in terms of uh, going on track, I mean, um, you you run a program and your program is a charity, which is called Just Hands Charity. And tell me a little bit about what Just Hands is doing and how Just Hands is getting guys behind the wheel who maybe for one reason or another thought that they couldn't. You're kind of giving them some hope with that. Yeah, I, look, Pennzoil is uh, our, one of our biggest supporters. And so, you know, we're, I'm so excited. Not only did they allow me to, to do this project with Joey, but they're, they're such a supporter of, of the mission that we have. And we share the, the mission of, of I'm going to say, equality. And the reason why I say that is because uh, track driving is the only, and being on track, is the only sport for disabled people that makes us equal with able-bodied people. You and I will never ski in the same division together. You and I will never, never do marathon in the same division. You got you and I will never play basketball in the same division. However, track driving, car doesn't care that I'm in a in a chair, and nobody on the track knows that I'm in a chair. So it's, it's we're fully equal, and that is it's such an amazing thing, right? And so uh, I started Just Hands because I needed to share that with other people. So we have people come to us. Um, we've had people fly from Europe, from California, everywhere to come to us to learn track driving. And that is everything from, you know, as simplistic as ride alongs, you know, where I put them in the car and I scare them uh, all the way to um, autocross and traditional track driving. Um, so we've got a couple cars here. We've got a car at Spa uh, in Belgium. We've got a car at Nürburgring in Germany. And we're about to put some more here in this country as well. 
That's great. And, you know, with with just hands, you're able to really, I think, you know, get guys like like I was saying on the track and, you know, maybe even encouraging folks to pursue a career in this, um, you know, and I mean, racing is just it's something that we love from a hobbyist perspective all the way to the professional level of things. Um, now, tell me a little bit, too, real quick. When we're looking at some of the things that Just Hands uses, um, you know, to to convert these cars, um, what technologies are you seeing that as technology is increasing, as it's improving, as electronics are getting better, are you seeing that things are only going to get even better for folks with reduced mobility? You know, I, I hear that question uh, occasionally, and what shocks most people is that the hand controls that we use have been in cars for. So I've been in chair now 30 years before me. Okay. Right. So, so they've been there a lot. The exposure of, of the hand controls has not really been there. Um, so it's not super new technology per se. What is new though is, uh, you know, we're, we're working right now to create a racing edition of the hand controls where you're going to be able to use your fingers to shift and things like that. Those advancements are very welcome, but all in all, they're, they're, it's very simplistic and fairly inexpensive. Um, we're talking two to 3,000 bucks to retrofit a car. So it's not as, uh, I mean, look, if you're getting in the race car world, you're, you're spending money anyway, right? So um, <laughs> you're spending more than two to $3,000, I'll spending, tell you that. Yeah, well, yeah a little, <laughs> little bit more than that, right? So, um, so, but so two to three grand, you know, is, is, uh, capable right or reachable for from a lot of folks and um it's that simple and look you can put the hand controls in it only takes a couple hours to put them in but once they've been put in you can still i can still drive with able-bodied drivers mm -hmm. so some of my teammates are they still use their feet to drive right right well and 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 i like how you said that you know racing and with cars that's that's the great equalizer here with that because you're right you know with regardless of you know who's sitting in that seat that car you know, you point it in the right direction. You hit those apexes in the right way. You're going to be doing just as good as the next guy. And I really love exactly. that. I, I really love that. And I think that what you're doing with Just Hands is really great. Now, tell me where people can find uh, more about Just Hands. Yeah, go to JustHands.org. Uh, you can go to uh, our Instagram, Just Hands Foundation, um, or look me up, TorstenGross.com, and that'll point you there as well. Um not not many just hands out there. So you Google us, you'll find us pretty quickly. Fantastic. And now as we wrap up, one question I often like to ask guys, especially guys who work in the racing industry, who get on track a lot. You know, we're we're talking to dudes who oftentimes are driving crazy race cars. What's uh, Torsten? What is in your garage at home right now? What interesting, cool, maybe daily drivers, to totally interesting daily drivers do you have? My, my daily driver is an Audi A6, uh, and then to get to and from the track to tow my race car, I've got a uh, Silverado 1500, and then my race car itself is a 981 uh, Porsche Cayman. Okay, fantastic. And I assume obviously fitted with some of the you know, hand controls you were just talking about and just going to show that you know, I think your story and what you're talking about uh, what especially Just Hands Foundation is doing, I think, really is a great way for people to be encouraged. I think for people, especially who have reduced mobility, to be encouraged, you know, to to do great stuff and get out there, get on the racetrack. Um, but also, I think, you know, as uh, as a reminder for those of us who, you know, are able bodied, you know, to you know, take a look at everything that's going on and say, hey, this is amazing. Look what these folks are doing. This is really great. We need to get behind this and we need to support it. And I think this is really good stuff that you're doing, Torsten. I want to thank you so much for joining me here on Automotive ADHD. Absolutely. Thank you for having me and giving me the time. I appreciate it. Hey, if you enjoyed this interview, join me every single weekend on the radio in Colorado Springs, Saturday morning at 9 a.m. on AM 1460 and FM 101.1 The Answer. Or you can join me right here on the podcast as well as YouTube and Facebook. And remember, I play listener submitted car sounds here on the show. Send those to me, facebook.com slash automotive ADHD. Thanks for listening. I'll talk to you on the radio next week.